Good evening, I'm Rizal Michael and you're watching Kini News, the show that brings you today's biggest stories. Shocking information from the Health Ministry's press conference today. The Ministry's top officials, including Dr. Noor Hisham, were kept in the dark over Minister Karudin's quarantine breach for weeks. The Health Ministry was not aware that Plantation Industries and Commodities Minister Karudin Aman Razali had breached COVID-19 quarantine rules after he returned from Turkey on July 7th for several weeks, until they were informed about it last week. This is what Health Ministry Director General Dr. Norisham Abdullah told a press conference this evening. Uh, what we, uh, all of us here, we were not, we were not informed. We have only been informed last week. And what we did, the first thing is to uh, instruct an uh, internal investigation. And yesterday only I got the report from in internal investigation, a full report, what happened from the ground, uh, and we were not informed. So it's very important for our frontliners, uh, whatever happened at the ground level, to inform us or inform the superior so that action can be taken as soon as possible. So the, but, uh, what, uh, but more importantly today uh, is under police investigation. So police is also part of our uh, uh, enforcement under the Act 342. So under Section 3, we really empower the police. Thereby, the public officer, police, AG, uh, they are also part of the uh, enforcement of the Act 342. So we will leave the police to do the, all the investigation and take the necessary action. So I hope that the police will do a good job and then uh, uh, address this issue as soon as possible. Dr. Hisham was also asked whether Kairuddin was accompanied by his family and whether his entourage were also screened. Second, as I said, uh, you know, the case is related, uh, it's a police case. We leave it to the police to investigate further, to come up with an uh, official report and etc. So we are also uh, in the dark uh, because we only got to know last week. So internal investigation has been done. I've seen the report and then the report has been given to the police. Meanwhile, Dr. Noor Hisham announced that Malaysia reported 11 new COVID-19 cases today, with nine cases being locally transmitted. The remaining two were imported. From the nine local cases, a bulk came from Kedah, with seven cases, with five linked to the Tawa cluster. Selangu and Perlis also saw one new case in each state, respectively. The new cases bring the size of the Tawa cluster to 70 cases. The five new Tawa cluster cases today involve students in a primary school in the state. Now the matter is in the hands of the police, who have begun investigating the breach. Senior Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob echoed Prime Minister Mohidin Yassin's statement today that the case of Cabinet Minister Karudin Aman Razali breaching the COVID-19 quarantine order will be left to the enforcement authorities. Jika nak dibawa ke mahkamah, kes itu perlu disiasat. Perlu disiasat oleh polis. Pihak polis perlu membuka kertas siasatan. Dan kertas siasatan perlu dihantar ke Jabatan Peguam Negara untuk Peguam Negara memutuskan sama ada nak menghadapkan ke mahkamah ataupun NFA ataupun melepaskan. Jadi saya dipahamkan uh, semalam pun yang Mbak Muhammad Perdana Menteri membuat statement bahawa kita serahkan kepada pihak berkuasa untuk tindakan seterusnya. Jadi mungkin sekarang ni pihak ada kenyataan daripada pihak polis, pihak polis sedang menyiasat. So kita serahkan kepada pihak polis lah untuk membuat siasatan. Meanwhile, on a separate matter, the minister announced that students 12 years old and below are only required to wear face shields when they are at school. Harga face shield, harga face shield adalah lebih kurang tiga ringgit hingga lima ringgit saja dan mereka boleh menggunakan sampai berbulan-bulan. Hanya Kementerian Kesihatan perlu keluarkan dari segi garis panduan bagaimana nak mencuci dengan sabun ke dengan apa-apa pun. Jadi yang itu boleh dipakai sepanjang masa walaupun satu shield pun sudah cukup untuk berbulan-bulan. Jadi itulah keputusan yang dibuat oleh Kementerian tadi, oleh Jawatan Kuasa Khas Menteri-Menteri tadi. Esmal added that the government still encourages face masks to be worn by students but it is not obliged. Since August 1st, the government has made it compulsory for masks to be worn by individuals at public spaces. However, wearing the protective gear has not been made mandatory for school students as the government wanted to study its impact especially on parents who are facing financial constraints. AMNO leader Razlan Rafi has called on the PN government to review all of the direct tender contracts awarded by Harapan so they're not seen as colluding with the previous government. Untuk makluman Dewan Yang Mulia ini, semasa uh, pentadbiran sebelum ini, 
uh, dahulu uh, sejumlah 101 projek atau perolehan yang bernilai 6.61 bilion ringgit telah diluluskan secara dengan terus oleh Kementerian Kewangan. 6 bilion astagfirullahalazim. This was the revelation by Finance Minister Tengku Zafrul Abdul Aziz that caused a commotion in the house yesterday. And today, AMNO Supreme Council member Razlan Rafi has called on the government to cancel all of those projects awarded by the previous Pakatan Harapan administration through direct negotiations. He said the PN government must cancel all the limited tenders awarded to these companies. He added that the government must be brave to take this action if it wishes to avoid a public perception of PN colluding with Harapan to unevenly distribute the country's wealth. Razlan also questioned how it was possible that in only 22 months, the Harapan government could have evaluated 101 projects in a transparent manner. Meanwhile, Environment and Water Minister Tuan Ibrahim Tuan Man echoed calls for the government to expose the full list of companies that were awarded the projects in question as well as their individual costs. Tuan Ibrahim said Harapan's hypocrisy is unmatched, although they often accuse others. The past deputy president said it was even more shocking that Bagan MP Lim Guan Eng, as then finance minister, had claimed that all the projects in question had received cabinet approvals. A claim denied by Azmin Ali, who was the economic affairs minister in the Harapan government. Dan tidak betul YB Bagan kata cabinet tahu mana ada pembentangan senarai ah, apa Gombak awak bukan PH eh, masa tu. Masa tu awak bukan PH eh, gombak. Jangan ah, layar. Gombak masa tu awak bukan PH eh, gombak. Ada macam ada bentang gombak ni. Tak. Lim Guaning hit back at his critics today and challenged the current finance minister to be transparent. Former Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng has implicated current Perikatan national leaders who were in the previous Pakatan Harapan government as being responsible for allegedly making several requests for projects to be awarded through direct negotiations. Lim said this during a press conference today where he challenged Finance Minister Tengku Zafrul Abdul Aziz to release the full list of contracts and which ministers at the time made the requests. Kroni siapa yang dapat seti- serta menteri mana yang memohon kelulusan runingan terus atau Zafru takut akan terbongkar nanti bahawa Perdana Menteri sendiri yang juga bekas menteri dalam negeri di bawah kerajaan Pakatan Harapan dan juga menteri-menteri penkhianat yang lain pun ada memohon projek runingan terus daripada saya sebagai Menteri Kewangan Adakah Perdana Menteri Perikatan Nasional juga bersalah Jika beliau memohon projek runingan terus pada masa itu, sampai hati mereka mengutuk diri sendiri. As Lim calls for the list to be released, the MACC will be looking to obtain it from the Finance Ministry. The anti-graft body said in a statement today that a thorough study will be done to determine whether there were elements of corruption, irregularities or abuse of power related to the matter. The MACC also confirmed that they have received several memorandums from various NGOs on the contracts allegedly awarded via direct tender. Unlicensed durian plantations in Raub this morning were surprised by a roadblock set up by the police. Pahang Enforcement Authorities were said to have set up a roadblock at the entrance of unlicensed durian plantations in Raub this morning. Several villagers in the area told Malaysia Kini that they witnessed about 20 police officers arriving in Kampong Sungai Chalit in four-wheel drive vehicles. The uniformed police were said to be joined by plainclothes police officers who then set up a roadblock across the main road, which serves as an entrance to many different durian farms. A representative from the Royal Pahang Durian Group, RPDG, was also spotted at the scene where the roadblock was being set up, said a villager. According to the villagers and durian growers, some of the unlicensed durian farmers had previously bought their entry permits from RPDG at the price of 1,000 ringgit per acre of land. Therefore, some of the durian growers were allowed to enter their farms. In a video taken by a villager, a police officer explained their duty was to ensure the safety of land office officials and representatives from RPDG. The officer in the video claimed that the roadblock was only set up for today. Ada mereka di dalam? Ah, dia ada di dalam. Maksudnya kita menjaga keselamatan. Ah. So, kita bukan, bukan selamanya kita tak oh, pagi. Bukan, hari bukan, ini. Pro, bukan pro hari ini ya? Bukan. Confirm lah. Confirm lah. So yeah, yeah, esok yeah. akan buka balik? Ah, besok. Meanwhile, Safe Musang King Alliance Samka President Wilson Chang explained that the road which is being blocked is the only main road in the village leading to many different durian farms which include legal and illegal ones. 
There were a few legal farm owners who were impeded from entering their property by the roadblock this morning. They were able to gain access after producing their land grant documents after some negotiation with the police. Coming up next, TikTok is taking on the Trump administration in the US. While you're busy taking TikTok videos, TikTok is in a battle with the Trump administration. We simply have no other choice. Those are the words used by TikTok in a blog post on Monday as the popular video sharing app filed a lawsuit to stop the Trump administration from blocking TikTok's usage in the United States. The company arguing the proposed ban is a violation of due process. Trump issued an executive order on August 6th calling for the ban, saying TikTok is a national security threat for its potential to share personal data it collects with China's communist government. TikTok said it strongly disagrees with the White House claim, writing that it has, quote, taken extraordinary measures to protect the privacy and security of TikTok's U.S. user data, and that it does not take suing the U.S. government lightly. TikTok also said the Trump administration violated its constitutional right to due process by banning the company without notice, and said the administration was incorrectly using the International Emergency Economic Powers Act to declare a national emergency. The app popular with teenagers for sharing dance moves has been engulfed in the growing dispute between the Trump administration and the Chinese-owned tech companies as Beijing and Washington square off. TikTok is owned by China's ByteDance. Trump's initial order calling for the TikTok ban was then followed up with another in August calling for the sale of TikTok's U.S. assets to a U.S. company within 90 days. ByteDance has been in talks with a number of buyers, including Microsoft and Oracle, in a deal that could value TikTok's U.S. assets as high as 30 billion U.S. dollars. Sources familiar with the matter told Reuters that for sale is not part of TikTok's lawsuit. You could be the fastest man on the planet, but it still doesn't mean you can outrun COVID-19. World record sprinter and eight-time Olympic gold medalist Usain Bolt has tested positive for the coronavirus and is self-isolating at his home in Jamaica after celebrating his 34th birthday with a big bash without face masks last week. Jamaica's health ministry confirmed late on Monday that Bolt, who holds the world records in the 100-meter and 200-meter distance, had tested positive after he posted a video on social media around midday saying he was waiting to hear back on his results. In a message that he appeared to have taped himself while lying in bed, he called on people who have been in contact with him to self-quarantine. Trying to be responsible, so I'm going to stay in and stay away from my friends. And also, I'm um, having no symptoms, so going to quarantine myself um, and wait on the confirmation to see what is the protocol and how should I go about quarantining myself from the Ministry of Health. So until then, uh, talk to all my friends and tell them that if you're not coming, contact commission just to be safe, quarantined by yourself. Bolt said he took the test on Saturday, the day after he celebrated his birthday at a bash where party goes dance to the hit Lockdown by Jamaican reggae singer Kofi. Best birthday ever, Bolt, who retired from athletics in 2017, wrote on his Instagram, posting a photo of himself holding his daughter Olympia, who was born in May. Fans wish Bolt a speedy recovery on social media. Drink up your ginger tea, one wrote, although some accused him of callousness. And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kidneytv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. I'll be back with more tomorrow, same time, same place. I'm Prasad Michael. Thank you for watching.